Hello, you guys. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Okay, I am waiting to see if I am currently upside, upside down, right side up. Do I look, do I look normal? Do I look like I'm topsy-turvy? Am I good? Oh, Ryan just gave me thumbs up. I'm good. Good morning, you guys. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh. Okay, I feel like I, um, for some reason, certain lives, like if I'm just talking real estate or if I'm just like doing my thing, I'm so confident and normal and everything's fine. But when I go on to share part of my heart, I get nervous. Like I, my hands are a little bit clammy and I, I'm just, I'm a little bit nervous to share with you guys some of this stuff. But I also feel like after going through last weekend, there was so much that was laying like really heavy on my heart. And um, I felt like you guys needed to hear these messages that I heard because they rocked me to the core, you guys, to the core. And so we are currently in my living room in El Dorado Hills, California. Um, and good morning, all you beautiful people. Beth, Shannon, I love all my hearts. You guys, where are you tuning in from? Tell me where you are right now. What state are you? What city are you? I wanna know where you're hanging in from, what you're doing. Are you in your office? Are you in your house? I'm only done up because I'm talking to you guys. You know, real life, I'm in yoga pants and my hair is in a pony. But if I'm on video, you get the full Monty. Um, okay, so I am so excited to chat with you guys today. I um, just got back from, uh, from Washington, D.C. And it was game-changing good. I have had the honor of being able to travel the world often. I mean, you guys know, I get people always writing me like, do you ever stay still? Like, why are you always moving? And, you know, I talk about it all the time, but it is a life by design. I am 100% aware that my lifestyle does not work for certain people. And some people are really open about sharing me how with me, how my lifestyle doesn't work for them. Awesome. That's totally okay. Cause my lifestyle works for me. Right. Um, and your lifestyle can work for you. And the awesome thing is, what you think about me, it's none of my business. None of my business. If you think you wanna share it with me, totally good. I just need to have thick enough skin to, to let it you know, roll off. And I'm working on that. That's work in progress. So this last um, weekend, or week rather, the last four days, I got to be in Washington, D.C. and I went there for um, something called Monations. And so those of you who know me, you guys know that I firmly believe in multiple streams of income. So I have my real estate company, the Rachel Adams Group, right? We have that. I have public speaking, so I get to travel and speak to people about how to build a business, work on their mindset. Um, I have my real estate coaching group with Maps Coaching, limited to legendary. And then I have um, Monate, which is a um, incredible naturally based shampoo company. Um, now, the reason that I always get nervous to talk about anything having to do with not real estate is I'm the last freaking person in the universe who thought I would ever be talking about shampoo. Like it, I'm not that girl. I, it's nothing I ever thought I'd talk about. And yet I went to a shampoo convention last weekend. So I'm going to share with you guys some of my takeaways. Um, now I firmly believe that people are in the right place at the right time. Um, for the right reason and one of the things that is so cool and why I'm so Positive that I am aligned in the right companies is let me share this with you So Keller Williams right their philosophy is God family business God first then your family and then your business because most people we know have it flip-flopped, right? So Monation, I'm sorry Monations. So I was just in mega camp in Austin and um, we had we had um, John Maxwell there and it was incredible, right? We had all these phenomenal real estate agents teaching their best secrets on, to, on the front of the stage, right? And um, it was amazing. And then we have, um, we always connect with each other and grow with each other and they bring in these phenomenal speakers. So 
Mega Camp Real Estate, John Maxwell came. Um, usually when we do family reunion, we end it with inspirational brunch and we connect with each other and with God, right? Well, this time with Monet, they did something called Monations where they recognize um, uh, leaders in the company and we get to grow. Well, guess who came to speak? John Maxwell came to speak there as well. Um, and they had leaders from all over the world talking about what they're doing, best practices in their business. And then they ended the weekend with a church service. Church service, you guys. What kind of company ends a weekend about business growth with a church service? The right kind of company for me. So it's really interesting for me how these things align. And what I did um, is I wanted to share with you guys, I had 13 pages of notes from this incredible weekend. I'm like already crying. This is gonna be a good life for you guys. Um, but I have 13 pages of notes from this incredible weekend and I have um, broken them down into less than that because this does not need to be a two hour live. What I wanted to do though is I wanted to share with you guys my main takeaways from this weekend. And if any of you guys saw my post on Facebook, I had posted a picture of all the phenomenal speakers we had. We had um, Ray Higdon, Rita Davenport, um, John Maxwell, uh, Todd Duncan. I mean, just these absolute powerhouses, um, Amanda Gore, powerhouses, you guys. And the funny thing is, is they can speak to a group of real estate agents, they can speak to a group of carpet cleaners, they can speak to a group of people talking about shampoo. It does not matter. At the end of the day, being successful is still an inside game, right? It is being consistent with your business, right? It's adding value to others. It's having systems and structures. It's surrounding yourself with bigger people, smarter people, right, than you are, and learning to grow, getting out of your comfort zones. And it was so funny because they're talking and they're giving these amazing takeaways and I am just like, it, it was mind blowing. So I'm gonna jump into some of these with you guys. And then also, um, I made a post on my Facebook page about sharing the notes, the 13 pages of notes. If you guys want them, I am so more than happy to share them with you because I feel like whatever industry you're in, we all can grow together and everybody wants more than they have right now often, right? Not necessarily like some, for some people it's money, some people it's relationships, some people it's their health, some people it's their faith. We're not all usually at a, you living at a level 10 life. And so in all categories, right? And so what I wanted to do is just share with you some of the takeaways I had in hopes that will inspire you guys. And if any of you are feeling stuck in your life right now, I hope that this will help propel you and move you forward. And if you cry, no big deal, cause I'm a crier. Okay, so um, one of the first people who spoke was Rita Davenport, and um, she said that success is a numbers game. You have to get comfortable with a no, and I feel like, you know, that hits home for me, and I don't know if that hits home for you guys, but it's like with, so I'll give you two examples, right, because I've got two businesses, and there's a lot of different people watching this. With real estate, I started my business door knocking 200 doors a week. 200 doors a week and doing three open houses a week. And you guys, I have to tell you, I worked really hard door knocking, right? And yet I will tell you this, it took me four months before I closed my first transaction. Four months before I first closed my first one. And so think about this, like four months, think about how many doors that is knocking, think about how much rejection that is. No thank you, go away, why is this blonde girl knocking on my door? And yet I knew that there was something more for me so I stayed consistent. And with money, I said no seven times. My girlfriend Dawn was like, try my shampoo. I'm like, get out of my face, I'm not going to your party. She's like, try my shampoo. I'm like, no thank you, I'm not interested one shower, one wash getting this thing on my head and I felt the difference. I had damaged, dry, split ends, right? I dyed my hair over processed and all of a sudden it was like night and day and then I heard about the growth of the company and I was like all in. So you never know when the person is gonna say yes and I will tell you that I have people who will follow me on Facebook or I knocked on their door for like seven months, 10 months, two years and they're like, "Get up. no thank you, I'm not interested. And yet when they're ready, when their timing aligns or you give them a, um, a door knocking piece that has where to watch or where to see the fireworks on the 4th of July, you're constantly adding value to people, right? You're constantly doing the right thing, being consistent in your business. When they need you, they're going to come to you. But if you knock on a door once or you ask someone for their business one time and they say no to you and then you give up, 
what does that say, right? That says that your goals don't actually matter. Your business doesn't actually matter. You were just kind of trying it out to see how it felt. I will tell you that if I was gonna hire a professional, I would want somebody who was comfortable with saying the no's, right? Um, one thing also she said that was really cool is if you start out at the top, you can never appreciate what it gets to what it takes to get to the top. Like I wouldn't trade my journey for anything. I know that, you know, I when I think about that, so if you start at the top, you can never appreciate what it gets to take to the or takes to get to the top. When I think about that, I think about, you know, the struggles. Like when a lot of times you think you see someone who's successful and we see them on social media or in magazines or TV and we think like their life is so easy. It's just handed to them. They probably don't even work that hard. And reality is like we don't see the struggles that happened to them for years and years and years ago. We don't see the struggle that they're going through because we just see the highlight reel. We see what's happening now. You don't see them having to have food stamps, right? You don't see them, I mean, for me, not even being able to put gas in my car to get to a real estate showing and crying on my garage floor because I didn't have any money. NSF fees were like my best friend. I was beh paycheck behind a paycheck, right? And yet I knew there was more for me out there, so I kept digging, I kept working. And now I get to do Facebook Lives and all this cool stuff, right, and share with you guys, but I promise you it is so important to share the struggle, not just the highlight reel, because that's what people want from you. And those of you that are watching that are like, gosh, I wish that things would change in my business. I wish that I could have a little more. You have to be totally transparent with who you are and what you've been through. People don't just want perfection. They want you, you guys. They want what you're going through. They want to know that like, I mean, don't even get me started on Ryan, but it's like, they want to know that you don't just have this perfect flawless little life, but that things like really have happened to you. Um, something else she said is success is living your life the way you choose and then letting go of the things or people who no longer serve you. Hello, right? Letting go of the people or the things who no longer serve you. So as you're on your path for success, as you're starting to grow and get clarity on the kind of person you want to be and who you are now, things change, you guys. Goals are big and scary. And sometimes, especially when you go to a, you know, a motivational um, uh, event like I did, you all of a sudden come home and you're like, are these goals for me? Or are these goals for someone else? Because I will tell you that I have done so many things, you guys, for the wrong reason. I feel like I, like success for me used to be money. I was like, once I have money, everything's gonna be better. Or when I was really overweight, once I was skinny, everything's gonna change. All I need to be is skinny, because the skinny girls, life is easy for them, right? Everything's easy for the skinny girls. And then I got thinner, and I was like, wait a second, I still can't pay my bills or I still don't even know what makes me truly happy. Yeah, I can fit into a size four and yet what else is there? Because if you're constantly trying to fill your life with these outside things and doing things for other people and for the wrong reasons, you're still empty inside. Like you have to deal with your core issues. You have to deal with your soul. What is happening inside? And then you get clarity on what makes you happy. Like when I think about, sometimes I will go to make a post and I will delete it or I'll edit it like five times because I'm worried about that one person who I know thinks that I shouldn't travel so much or who I know thinks that I shouldn't have done a shampoo company or whatever. And reality is I don't care. I don't care because I have a life that I want to lead with Ryan. I want to travel more. And bottom line for me is I want to impact people. I want to help people change their lives, get into a different financial position than they're in right now. And like, achieve their goals, achieve their dreams. If it's an extra $500 that somebody wants to make, amazing. If it's 15 houses they wanna sell in a month, amazing. It's not about me, it's about them and their goals. And so many times when we're thinking about our life, we're so worried what other people think and how they're gonna feel. And I'm telling you, like I'm thinking of one person right now and I know that my world does not work for her. I get it. We used to be closer, we're not anymore, I get it. And you know, I think all the time about this girl and reality for me is 
my world doesn't work for her, but maybe some of the things in her life don't work for me and that's okay because I choose joy. I choose happiness. I choose what makes my soul feel lit up and it's personal. This has to be personal for you guys. So I would encourage you to take a piece of paper and write down your notes, write down what truly makes you happy. Like what actually brings you joy at your core. And if you're going to make a post and you're worried what people are going to think because it's really who you are and it's really what your heart is speaking, people want to know your hearts. You guys, people work with people they like and they like you. And it's so important that you find clarity in who you are. I know it's not easy. Trust me. It is a constant battle that I face to try and not care what other people think. And at the end of the day, I know that I have some really tough decisions coming up, like literally coming up soon, that is not going to make some people happy. And yet it makes me happy. And if it's right for me and Ryan, and it's right for the life that we want to lead, then that has to be enough. And it's more than enough. It is more than enough. Because you and me, you guys, we are more than enough. We have all the passion inside of and all the desire in, in us. It's just we have to be willing to listen to it and not listen to the noise. Because all those people out there, all those people who are talking to you and telling you you're dreaming too big, why are you doing this? It's noise. And they don't belong in your world. They really don't. I've said this before, but I always say, people say like, oh, the right people come into my life and the wrong people leave. No, 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 my friends, the right people come into your life and the right people leave because as you are deciding who you are and the kind of person you want to be for the rest of your life, those people do not belong in your world. Okay. So the right people are going to leave your life and you stay strong to who you are. <laughs> Heck yeah. Someone's all, bye Felicia. Peace out. Um, okay. Okay. I have like 90 notes and I'm not even going. I'm on my tangent because you guys know how I am. <sighs> Taking a deep breath, having a sip of coffee. How cute is this mug? It says Mrs. Lee. I think it's backward for you guys, but it's so cute. I like everything in my life to say Mrs. Lee because it's like the greatest honor in my life to get to marry that hot, sexy man. I just said sexy on Facebook Live. Sorry. Um, okay. Now, if you want to grow professionally, you need to grow personally. So, so many people want to be successful in business. And so they go to sales seminar after sales seminar and they read these books I will tell you, 80% of what I do, you guys, it is developing myself personally. 20% of what I do is my business growing, and my business grows as a byproduct of me becoming a better person. Get clarity on who you want to be and surround yourself with people that are better than you. When I look at who my mentors are in life, I have different mentors in different categories. So I'll have a mentor for spirituality, for health, right? To get that body. Um, and I used to have a really tight, right before my wedding, man, I was like the hottest I'd ever been. And then I got married and I was like, you want cheesecake or do you want French fries or do you want wine? And I was like, yes, please. And thank God I have a man that loves me because he's all about the curves, right? Hearts for those curves. Give me some hearts. Um, but I will tell you, like, I have people, business, women, the women who I look up to in business, they are working moms. They are moms who are leading their lives at a high level in their marriage, putting their marriage first, um, putting their relationships first, putting their self number one. You got to take care of you before you can take care of someone else. You guys know this. And so I always look at how I can grow or personally, and then professional is a byproduct. That's all it is. It's a byproduct of you becoming a better person. Um, and Amanda Gore was there and she was so funny. If you guys don't know who she is, she has an awesome podcast. She's hilarious. She said, the most important thing in life is how you feel about yourself. The most important thing in life is how you feel about yourself. When you wake up in that morning, do you feel satisfied? Do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel empty? I know that when I, um, was going through my personal growth journey after I had got a divorce, I felt so just lost and empty and confused. And it took me a total journey of, of personal growth to feel like I loved myself. And, um, it, it was, it was really powerful because I feel like, again, it always comes back to me doing things for the wrong reason. I'm a people pleaser. I want to make everyone happy. So I will do things that don't actually align with who I am or aren't even what I want to do because I want to make someone else happy. And that, that doesn't serve anybody. And it certainly didn't serve me. 
Um, okay, this was really cool. So for those of you who are trying to up your game on social media um, and want to connect with others, this was really good. So Ray Higdon was there. He is this awesome like network marketing coach. And I've never listened to a network marketing coach because I still pretend like I'm not in network marketing because I still don't understand what it is. I just happen to like what I'm doing. Um, and so he said that I thought this was really cool. And remind you, no matter what I'm talking about, this aligns with every business. Build a culture so people are happy no matter where they're at. Build a culture. So with your business, you have the choice to build a business so that the people who are in your organization feel loved. They feel supported. I want you to think that if you have somebody on your team, do you only talk to them about the business? What is your goal? What are you going to do this month? How are you going to help people? What does that look like? No, I will tell you that when I first decided I was going to build a team, I'll use my real estate example. I said, okay, I'm sitting here and I'm watching these amazing people on stage and they're making millions of dollars. And I'm like, what is the difference between them and me? Oh my gosh, the difference between them is me and they have a, they have a team. I'm going to go home. I'm going to get all my friends to get their real estate license and come work for me. Come work for me. Mind you, I didn't say work with me. I said work for me. Well, you guys can guess what happened. My entire team imploded. Um, I lost my best friend and I found myself on the ground crying because I made it about me. I did not make it about them. And my culture, the culture of our team now, the real estate team, money, all of it, it's so much bigger and brighter and more beautiful when you make it about other people and not about yourself. So get to know the people's names on your team. Get to know if they have children. Find out when their birthdays are. Make them feel special. Do not make your business about you because you will fail. You need to make your business about other people, lifting them up, learning their goals. Because I will tell you now, when we have a goal, I don't say, I'm gonna sell this many houses. No, I don't say that. I'm going to say, what is your goal? How many houses do you want to sell this year? How many vacations do you want to go on? Where are you going on vacation? What resort is it? Who's watching your kids when you go? Oh my gosh, you're bringing your kids with you? Dig into your people, you guys. This is a mistake that I made and now I don't make it anymore. I know the names of all of my friends, um, of my friends' kids, my the people on my teams, I know their kids' names. Um, a couple of their kids I'd like to kidnap because they're freaking adorable and I don't have a child yet and I really want a child. <laughs> so I might borrow your child. That's not weird. It's not creepy. Um, okay, you guys, are you are you guys tuning in? Are you still hanging in with me? Where are you, where are you watching from? What are you doing? Tell me so far your favorite takeaway from this because I'm curious if any of this is resonating with you guys. We have quite a few of you watching. So... I just wanna know what your favorite takeaways are so far so I know that you're paying attention. Because how you participate here, my friends, it's how you participate everywhere. I have such a, that's one of my favorite bold quotes, and I have such a uh, like squirrel mentality where I'm watching this but then I'm texting someone else and I'm doing different things. I'm like, you know what? That's not what this is about. What more of this is about is making sure that if I choose to do this Facebook Live or if I choose to have lunch with a girlfriend, I'm having lunch with that girlfriend. I'm doing this Facebook Live. It is something that is so so important to me to be present with people, especially the busier we get, my friends. The busier that we get, the more important it is to be focused when you are in front of somebody because people feel like we are just floating through and you're always too busy and that's not what that matters. N none of that matters. What matters is when you commit to something, you're in front of that person. You make this your one priority. Okay. Um, this was so cool. Okay. So this I thought was really neat from Ray Higdon and he talked about, um, he, when you are sharing a story on social media, you never share an up without sharing a down. You never share an up without sharing it down because if you're just that person who's constantly bragging about how amazing you are and all these awards you've won, you're not relatable because not everybody is going to sell a hundred houses a year. Not everybody is going to have this massive company, right? Or, a, or be walking across the stage winning an award. And what I think is so cool about that is like, I feel that you have to have this balance in life. The reason that I think that I get so many beautiful messages from people who say that they can relate to my story is, I mean, to talk about being broke. My gosh, like I, I am that person who literally was struggling so badly, not sure how I was going to pay my rent, borrowing money from everyone, borrowing money from friends and feeling so guilty that I had to ask. I never wanted to ask somebody for money. And yet 
I knew that there was more I needed and I, and I knew I would pay people back. That's the other thing. If you borrow money from someone, you pay them back. Be the kind of person who pays someone back. Don't be the person they have to ask you to pay them back. That's not okay. So I made sure that all of these people who I borrowed money from, I paid them back. And then as I grew in my career, I made sure that I always appreciated them and acknowledged them and made sure that they knew that I wouldn't be where I'm at now if it wasn't for them taking a chance on me. And you know, when I talk about Ryan, my gosh, like, not everybody knows that I was married before, right? Not everybody knows that I cried myself to sleep for two years, two years, miserable, knowing that there was more to life and to love. And yet I had said my vows, so I was going to stick it through, right? Not people, people don't know the struggle if they know me now, but they know Ryan and they know how how much he loves me and how good he is to me. And that every morning he wakes me up and says, good morning, beautiful. And I'm telling you, you guys, I am not beautiful in the morning. I look beat. I got things going places like this is, this is like not this, right? But every morning he wakes me up and he says, good morning, beautiful, because he sees who I am inside. And that's the kind of person that I worked hard to have. And so I think it's so important that you guys share your struggles when you share your triumphs, because people want to know who you are at your core. They want to know that you're relatable. Um, this was another thing. It was so good. He said, um, don't make other people feel bad if their level of desire doesn't match yours. Don't make people feel bad if their level of desire doesn't match yours. Whoa. Whoa, you guys. Like that is so huge for me. When he said that, I was like, oh man. Because all the time, I feel like I am trying to wake the dead. I'm like, you said you wanted this. You said you wanted to work hard. When we sat down and we figured out your why, why you were getting into this business, we talked about it, right? We talked about what mattered. And then all of a sudden you're not hitting your goals or you're not showing up to the office or you're not showing up to the calls. You cannot wake the dead. You cannot want someone's goals more than they want it themselves. So I have gotten in the habit now when someone makes a commitment to me, I sit down, I find out their why. Sorry, my nose is jing. Um, I find out their why and then I figure out and we, we genuinely talk about what they want for their life. But then if they unplug, if they choose to unplug from their business, I will send them a message and I will say, hey, we sat down on this date and we talked about your why and this is what you said you wanted and this is why you wanted to do it. And I just wanted to check in and see how things are going, right? And then maybe a week or two later, sometimes they respond, sometimes they don't. I'll say, um, don't wanna bother you. So this will be the last message you get from me. If things change, I'm still around. However, I don't wanna bother you. I, you know, I'm here working my business, but if this doesn't work for you, I get it. And then you gotta let it go. You have to let it go. You cannot sit there and try and shake someone and be like, what's wrong? What's happening? This is why business is a numbers game, you guys. You always have to be recruiting and building your business. You always have to be thinking, who needs an opportunity that could change their life? Who wants $500 more a month? Who wants to go on vacations? Who wants investment properties? Who wants to have the best hair care, right? You get to choose what it is um, that you're saying to these people. But remember, you can Oops, sorry about that. If it froze, just keep moving forward. I just got a call. Um, Okay, so then, okay, so one thing I thought was really cool. So John Maxwell was there and he is um, an amazing speaker. Those of you guys who know him, he's written 70 plus books. Um, he travels the world. He's incredible. I got to see him at Mega Camp in Austin again, uh, like in the same month, basically within 30 days um, in DC. And one of the things that I love, and I'm just gonna read you guys some of his notes because it was so good. And again, if you guys want all my notes, um, he, hi Joey. Um, he, if you guys want all the notes, I have a Facebook post, um, on my personal page, which I'm on right now. And it has a picture of uh, shoes, heels that I threw away. I got this really cute pair of heels for work, um, for the event. And I literally have like, still, I have cuts on my heels from them. So one use tossed them. But if you guys want the notes, don't comment here, comment on that post because, um, my assistant will pull that and we'll get it to you guys today. So he said, you are in sales. You are in adding value to people. If you want to be successful in life, live an intentional life. Most don't lead their life. They accept their life. Everything worthwhile is uphill. If you have a good relationship, 
If you have a good business, it's all uphill. You have to work at it. Uphill is not an accident. It is intentional, you guys. The problem, we have uphill hopes and downhill habits. <sighs> okay, unpack that for a second. So we have these big dreams, right? We have these big goals and a lot of times things happen where it sets us off our goal and it can knock you to your feet, it, to your feet. It can knock you to your butt, not your feet. You should be on your, should be on your feet. Um, and you know, we, we want, we say we have these big goals and we want to do all this stuff in business, but then if somebody tells us no, we're like, oh, okay, well they said no. So I got to just, it's not going to work for me. Maybe this was the wrong business that I'm doing, or maybe I shouldn't have thought about, um, signing up for this, or maybe I'm in, I am not going to get this listing. If I didn't get this listing, I'm not going to get the next listing and I'm going to go home and I'm going to eat a tub of ice cream. And I'm going to cry for two days. And then I'm going to question everything I've ever thought was right in life. Right. And you just, you start spinning. You have to have uphill habits. You have to think if I'm going up, I'm going to surround myself with people who are also going up, who are going to tell me that goal is incredible, girlfriend, and how can I support you in getting there? If you have uphill habits, you're waking up in the morning and instead of saying, gosh, I am so tired, I got almost no sleep, five hours, I know I'm gonna be tired. Instead, what you say is, you know what? I got five hours of sleep last night. I am so grateful that I get to wake up this morning and have a beautiful day. All these opportunities lay ahead of me, right? If someone cancels on you, if you have an appointment for with somebody for, um, in a, for work and they cancel on you, instead of you saying, you know what? I can't believe they canceled on me. I'm so pissed off. This day sucks, it's over. I always say, oh my gosh, what a blessing. I just got an hour back to my day. What can I do to this hour and how can I add value to somebody in this hour? right? You have to think like uphill habits, uphill mindset, everything, everything in life, you guys, rises and falls with your mindset. How strong is your mindset? Who are you surrounding yourself with? What are you telling yourself? What happens in here? This part, this is the most important thing in your life. Because if you think you can, or you think you can't, you are right. Every day when I was struggling in real estate, when I first started, I would say, I am a top producer in this market. I am a top producer in this market. I am a top producer in this market. You guys, I'm paycheck behind a paycheck. I can't even afford to get to a showing. I did not even know how to do a listing presentation. But you know what? I'm a top producer in this market. I'm a top producer in this market. It is not about where you are right now. It's not about who you are. It's about who you're going to become. And the difference between this and this, the person you are now and the person you're gonna become, it is small, good, consistent choices. It's small, good, uphill habits. You cannot have an uphill life, an uphill dreams, uphill world without having uphill habits, you guys. Your mindset matters and you have to keep it strong. Um, another thing that John talked about that I thought was brilliant is activity is not necessarily an accomplishment. Activity is not necessarily an accomplishment because results, those are what matter. Results are what matter. Now, consistency in your activities obviously matters, right? That matters. And yet I have to tell you that your activities need to be on point, right? Consistently doing the right things, consistently showing up on time, consistently adding value to people. And then the results follow that. But if you're just doing activities and you're not getting the results, well, then you have to think, Gosh, what do I need to shift in my activities? Maybe it's shifting to a different script. Maybe it's getting a script partner so that you can handle objectives with or objections with each other. Be open to growth. Be open to change. When I have something that's happening in my world, so um, we do team calls every Monday at 9 a.m. and we always talk about um, uh, we talk about something great. So we talk about like the best thing that happened and then uh, over the weekend and then we talk about our opportunity for growth. In my world, we do not have problems. We have opportunities for growth. Let that sink in for a second. You do not have problems, you guys. You have opportunities for growth. Every one of us can grow from where we're at right now. You just have to be willing to get outside your comfort zone and maybe get up a little bit earlier or maybe try something new. Or if you're struggling, ask somebody, ask a mentor, find a mentor who is leading their life at a high level in the category that you're struggling in and say, you know what? 
like people love flattery. So I am like not, I mean, there are so many people who I've reached out to and I just said, you know what? This is something that I truly admire about you. And because of you teaching me this and has changed my life in this way. And now I wanted to ask you, I'm struggling a little bit and I know there is nobody better than you who could help me in this space. And then I asked my question, shower them with love people. If you shower them with love and then you ask for a little bit of love, they're down. They want to help you. Um, okay. There's so much good. You guys, these notes are so good. I had a really hard time picking. Um, Amy Murphy was there. She's a sweetheart from Canada. She said, um, don't just say words. Don't just say something. Show what you mean with action. Prove that you mean business. And she said, similar to me, she said, don't see things as challenges. See it as an opportunity. Clearly she speaks my language. Um, this was so awesome. So Connie Sanchez was there. She's my girlfriend from SoCal. And she was talking about how, so she is um, a senior executive director. So she's the highest rank in our company. Most senior executive directors are making about six figures a month, a month. What? Talk about residual income. Hello. I like that. Um, and so she had said that she is not the person who's walking across the stage winning all these awards, but what she is, is she is someone who shares her journey. And so I want to encourage you guys to share your journey. Talk about who you are and what you've been through. People want to hear your story. They connect with who you are on the inside and your heart, not just the fancy words you have or how much money you make or the vacations you go on. They want to know your life is real. Your life is raw. They want to know that, you know, your kid threw up on the floor or that your hair looks crazy in the morning or whatever it is. They want to know that things aren't always perfect for you. And so she said, um, you don't have to be like this massive social media influencer. If you have five followers, that's a one. If you have five followers, impact or influence those five people. Make a difference. That one hit home for me. Honestly, that one hit home for me really big because I think so much times we get caught up. Like I can't do it because I'm not her. I can't have what she has because I've never been in that space or I've never achieved what she's had. But again, you guys, you are judging yourselves. You are judging who you are at your core, who you are on the inside by someone else's outside. And if the reality is like, think about, so I always think about um, Blue Heart International. So it's an anti-sex trafficking nonprofit that I um, used to be on the board for. Now I'm an ambassador for them. And they are making a massive impact in our world, taking women away from sex trafficking, bringing them off the streets, rehabilitating them, right? That is the hugest thing that they can possibly do. That is the biggest gift you could ever give um, somebody in that situation, right? And they are now making an impact on the world. But do you know what they did? They started with one girl. They started with one girl who needed help. And so I always think about when I do a Facebook Live or like this or when I'm sitting in front of somebody, I don't know if my message is going to help. I don't know if my message is going to affect everyone or if some people are sitting there thinking like, what the heck is she talking about? And I feel like she's yelling at me. Why is she so excited? Uh, you know, and yet if I help one person, if this live helps one person make, take a step forward in their business or, or get move past one more no to get to that yes, then it's worth it. And you guys have stories that are worth it. You just have to be willing to share your heart and who you are. Um, okay, so this was really crazy. There was a woman on stage um, named Julie Stevens. And I, so this is the, like, this is one of the reasons why you guys want these notes because it was game changer for me. So I have this page and I have all of this page. Julie Stevens um, in Moni, the shampoo company, they've been around three and a half years, three and a half years, okay? She has made, she just got an award for making $5 million in income, $5 million in income. Like it is just shampoo people. How the heck can someone make so much money from that? But the thing that was so cool about her and these notes is like, she was talking about how she can add value to the people on her team and the struggles we went through and being proud of what you do and doing it with postures and you can't have highs without having lows. You can't replace your lack of consistency. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to do it. Celebrate the yeses. Whatever you say is true, right? You're right. Watch your words. Keep it simple. Do what the experts tell you. Money, this was so good. She said, money doesn't make you good or bad. It magnifies who you are and what you do with it. 
this chick is making five million dollars a year you guys and a year sorry not a year not a year but still i mean what and like oh like she gave three steps for success fill your cup and pour into others have a strong why and then be humble and kind like i cannot imagine that kind of income and yet you know, Ryan and I are the reason that we decided to even venture out of just having the three businesses, the three real estate based businesses is because I know that if I sell a house, I make money. But if I stopped selling houses, I'd stop making money. And we all the time, like Gary Keller himself, people say the average millionaire has seven streams of income. And so I decided that if I was going to truly lead the life by design and get Ryan to be able to travel with me, and he was in a nine to five job, right? He's a mechanical engineer, and we're wanting to travel and do these things together, but unfortunately nine to five, like they wanna see his face, right? So we realized we needed to have something that allowed us to find some residual income or passive income. And remember, I said no for seven months. And the thing that I always think is so interesting is sometimes it takes the right timing or the right opportunity or the right Facebook post or whatever for you to be open to another opportunity. And that's what happened for us. And now like we, we went to Bermuda, Bahamas. We're going to Bahamas in November, Miami, San Francisco, like all these places. We have over 4,500 people on our team. And I still, I'm telling you, it still comes down to the why. Why are people in business with you? Why are people wanting to work with you? You need to be able to lead by example and show them what's possible, but that means that you have to stay consistent in your business and consistent in what you're doing. Um. And this one thing she said was so cool. She said, confidence is not, they will like me. Confidence is, I'll be fine if they don't. Oh, I thought that was so good. I'll be fine if they don't like me. That means being so true to who you are and what you stand for that it does not matter what other people think. Um, Brittany Rose, another top 10 income earner, she said, um, never confuse your path with your destination. Never confuse your path with your destination. So success is not this, right? It's not this beautiful, simple thing. It is rocky, it is bumpy, it is like your team imploding. It is making a big goal for how much you're gonna do that year and all of a sudden some life shows up. Like I had so many different things happen. You guys, when I got a divorce, my world was rocked. It was rocked. And I was questioning everything about who I was and how I was gonna talk to people. And I hid my divorce from the world. It wasn't like I had a husband and then, and then I talked about my divorce. It was like, poof, he disappeared. I was so scared what people would think of me because I wanted them to think that I was this perfect professional. Life was easy. I Business was always great. My relationship was perfect. Reality was though, I cried for two years. I cried myself to sleep for two years. I'm questioning who I am. I'm running myself ragged, ragged, doing things for everyone. Yes, I can go to your house. Yes, I'll watch your kid. Yes, I can go to your birthday party. All these things. And in reality, I was exhausted because I made my purpose about making other people happy. But I could not be happy if I didn't know who I was or what I wanted. So I actually had to detach myself from that. And I had to really say, okay, I know my real estate journey to start was, was difficult, right? I know that my marriage did not go as I planned, but you know what? I don't have a single regret. I remember that when I was, um, going through, when I was um, going through the process of like thinking about separating and stuff, I was so conflicted because I had said my vows and I'm like, I have to stay, I have to stay. Right. And then what happened was, um, I went to a, a life coach, Anita, and she said, um, you can't change him. You cannot change him. But what you can do is keep your side of the table clean. No more passive aggressive attitude. No more negativity. I want you to be the best wife you could possibly be, the best person you could possibly be, the best friend you can possibly be. And then if it still doesn't work, you don't have any regrets. And I gave it my all. I poured every part of me into that. And you know what? I stuck in it for two more years past that. And at the end of the day, like I, um, I was given this, it was actually really cool. So this woman named Evangeline, she is, um, a, uh, lender and a really good friend of mine. She gave me this, she like brought this measuring stick out for me. Right. And she said, okay, Rach, I want to talk to you about your life right now. And I'm like, okay. And I'm in, you know, internally struggling. And she said, right now, I want you to imagine, uh, you live a hundred years. I was like, okay. She goes, you are 
you are 30. I was like, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm like 20, 28. She was like, you're 30. I'm like, okay. She goes, so you are, um, 28 years or you're 30 years old. You've already lived a third of your life. You have two thirds more basically. What do you want that life to look like? Who do you want to be for the rest of your life? What do you deserve? What do you deserve for your life? And I am sobbing, you guys, absolutely sobbing because I knew that the person that I was, I could never be the person I wanted to become with someone that was holding me back and not truly giving me all I needed to have to be the best version of myself. And it was like, I had three separate things that happened for me to realize that I was ready to move forward. But I will tell you, like having people in your life who will call you out on who you want to be and holding you accountable to that, that is the good stuff. Um, this is, was another really good one. So Vince Lombardi said, most people fail not because of their lack of desire, but because of their lack of commitment, the lack of commitment. <sighs> it's almost done. I promise. I have two more things to share with you guys, but all you guys are hanging in. Um, so I thought this was so big because I know that there are people watching right now who have big goals and you know, I understand that life shows up and things knock you off your track and you sometimes feel like, did I make the right choice or am I in the right place? But I will tell you that as you go through your journey, the right people are going to show up. The right opportunities are going to show up and maybe something's been talking to you and you're not ready to make the step because you're scared what will happen. You've got to have faith, you guys. When this, so this conference is going, there's all these phenomenal speakers and I'm taking tons and tons of notes, right? Tons of notes. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, gosh, this is impacting me. I can't wait to bring this back to my teams and share with them and love on them and, 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 and pour these notes into everybody because they made such an impact on me. They ended our weekend with a church service and, um, I will tell you that like I have gone kind of like in and out in my faith in different parts of my life because some things have happened and they're really, really hard. And I always think like, if God is present in my life, how is this so hard? How is this showing up right now? And it's like, you know, and I, I was raised Jewish. My mom and dad, I just, I mean, if those of you who know that I took my ancestry.com, I'm a hundred percent European Jew. And, um, I remember that when I was a little kid, I would always pray and I didn't know if Jesus existed. I just knew about God. So I would pray and I'd be like, God, you know, keep my family safe and make sure that no one harms us while we sleep. And Jesus, if you exist, if you could help out too, that'd be awesome. Right? Cause I'm like this little kid and I don't know any better. And as I went through my life and I went through my divorce and I had all these different things come into my world, I really felt like my faith was tested. And when I, when Monations ended and they, they do an optional church service, you don't have to go, but it's on, um, um, but it's on my, uh, um, it's on the itinerary. You can go to a church service. I, I went last year and it was my favorite thing of all of Monations. They're talking about, you know, they're, they're having these amazing speakers come in. They have these people earning 1 million several people earning a million dollars so far in the company, three million, five million, all these things. Um, my favorite part was church. So Craig um, Altman was the pastor who came and he was flown in from Stuart McMillan, our president. And he said um, that no matter what, no matter who you are or what you're doing in your life, this is something he tells everybody. Show up on time every day with a great attitude and you do the right things consistently. The more successful you get, the more kind you need to be towards others. The faithful must run their own race. Be true to you. It's your story, not anyone else's. Don't compare yourself. If you try to run someone else's race, you will feel insecure, inferior, and not enough. Do a few things well. It's the little things that count. And then he said this, and I'm like sobbing, you guys, sobbing. He said, um, you don't believe in your head. You believe in your heart. And I, knowing that like 
I feel like I've been tested so many times. I always know that when things are challenging in my life, if I go back to God, if I go back to my faith, I am okay. <sighs> I told Ryan like we're what we're we walked out of the church service and last year um there was a woman who was so dear to my heart her name's Ann Fisher and she um she was just announced at Monations as a three million dollar income earner and the reason that she got into this business was not to make three million dollars she has a special needs daughter sweet sweet girl named Gracie and her reason for getting into money is because she wanted to have enough money to build her daughter a wheelchair ramp to get out of her house like that that is the core of the people that I get to surround myself with it's yes money is amazing and it can buy fun things but like the impact that that being around the right people can have on you and on your core and who you how you want to affect other people is so big um and I just you know I walked out of the um, I walked out of there and we walked into our hotel room and Ryan was like, how are you? Cause I'm not, I'm just crying and I can't talk. And he's like, what's going on? Like talk to me. And I couldn't, I couldn't talk to him. And we walked back in the hotel room and I'm, um, and I'm, he's hugging me and he's like, do you want to talk about it yet? And I was like, I'm, I'm not ready yet. He's like, okay. And he's like, do you want to talk about it? And I said, um, like for me, I'm like such a big weekend. Right. And I'm literally sitting there and I told him, I said, um, that I've struggled in my faith and that I've struggled with always believing because sometimes things have been really, really hard. But then when he came into my life, when God brought him into my life, he reminds me how God good can be because he is everything in my world good that God represents. He is honest, he is pure, he is loving, he is unwavering in his faith and believing in me. And for me, like Ryan is my symbol that God exists because like the fact that this guy could be brought into my life, like that to me is everything, everything. And I'm like crying in the bathroom of a hotel room at Marriott and he's crying with me and we're just like pouring our hearts out, you know? And I'm like, what's your takeaway? And he's like, everything you said. Like, It just like, it was it was just a game changer. You guys like I like we're so then the last part to this, I swear I'm almost done. We're, we're driving home from the air or we're driving from our hotel to the airport and we are in a taxi and there's a guy named Leonard and he is our taxi driver and he is listening to me on a call with a prospect because we're leaving Monations and I had some people who were wanting to know about the business we're in and how, you know, I can coach them and what, what we're doing and how they can make extra income and go on the vacations and yada yada. So he's listening to me talk about money, but he's not really hearing me talk about the product, even though it's the best stuff ever. It was so much more about how it can impact someone's life and change their life and like all the stuff that I experienced in this amazing company and how the, when you are leading your life in the way you should, the right opportunities show up and the right people show up. And he's just listening to me and we, and I get off the phone and he says, um, can I share something with you? And I said, yeah. And he goes, girl, you are speaking my language. And I said, really? And he's just like, awesome guy, sweetheart. And he said, um, I want to tell you that when I was younger, like when I was in my early twenties, I was planning on committing suicide. And Ryan and I like stop what we're doing obviously and we're like focused on this man because again, the people in your life that are talking to you, they want you to be present. They want you to be connected, right? So Leonard's telling us that um, he was planning on commu committing suicide and that he just felt like the world was against him. He was on food stamps. He was broke. Um, you know, there was some drug use. Like things were really hard for him. Um, then he had kids and he said um, that his kids sat him down and said like, dad, you are enough and we love you and you're gonna do great things. And you guys, this beautiful man started pouring himself into God. He started pouring himself into like personal development and self-development and like figuring out who he was. And he said, you know what? This doesn't work my way. So I'm gonna try God's way. He said, um, he is gonna try someone else's way. Now, 
his life has completely changed. He got a job at Starbucks, so he works at Starbucks um, part-time and he works as an Uber driver part-time. And he said um, that he is always inspiring people, even if it's like giving him a coffee or all these different things. He's talking about the impact he can make on other people simply by doing good and listening and caring and sharing. And now he said that because of who he is and how he shows up at Starbucks, the CEO of Starbucks wants him to share his story to the world to the world and he happened to be our uber driver you guys um now you know i gave that man some samples to give to his girlfriend because this is the kind of people i want in my organization but like this was the thing that we talked about at the end and this is what i want to end this with for you guys <sighs> use your gifts use your unique gifts God did not build us to be small. He did not make us to sit back and let the world just fly by. Every one of us has unique gifts. Every one of us has a story and a journey. And you know what? It does not matter if you are just starting out in your career or if you haven't even found your right career. If you are a good person, if you do the right things, if you care about others, if you make it more about them than you, the good stuff comes, you guys. The good stuff comes and we have to stop comparing ourselves to other people. All that does is steal our joy. It robs us of our potential. It is not about them. It is not about what they're doing. It is about you and your unique journey, what you're going through. And you know what? You all have gifts. And it's about finding out what your gift is. And I know that I am just starting now to realize what my gifts are. And it's scary because I know that as I develop into who I want to become, it is not going to work for everybody. And I know that my friendships are going to change. And that's really hard for me because I love my girlfriends. I really do. I also know that my world doesn't work for everybody. And I am becoming more okay with that. It's not always easy. But I will tell you that if you continue to surround yourself with the right people, people that lift you, people that love you, people that pour into you, the good stuff comes. And I don't want you to feel like you can't share who you are because if you're watching this because you want to build your business, people work with people they like, you guys, and they like you. They probably love you and they want to hear who you are. Um, yeah, Amanda just said, find your tribe. We, I am so blessed to have a few different tribes in my life. Um, I have a real estate tribe. I have a shampoo tribe. I have people, um, I have, I have so many beautiful people in my lives. My girlfriends, my core girlfriends, like that know me, they've been there through the struggles and now they get to celebrate the good stuff, right? So my gosh, I, wanted to tell you that I'm so thankful you guys took so much time. There's most of you have been on here for like an hour. I'm so sorry. I was, this is supposed to be like 30 minutes in and out. I had a cup of coffee. I was going to be like all relaxed and we're just like hanging out, having chat. But like, I, I'm so passionate about other people finding their purpose because if I was not willing to be consistent with real estate, I would never be able to have this incredible team of 15 people that I get to help them achieve their goals and go on their vacations and love on their family and spend extra time with their kids. We always make it more about their family and their lives and their relationships before the business. It should be God first, then your family and then your business. And if God for you isn't like is a different thing if it's if it's doesn't have to be church, right? It can be going on a hike, it can be mindfulness it can be closing your eyes being present whatever it is for you you guys be true to who you are go after your dreams this weekend inspired me so much and i am so aware that some people still think it is crazy that i partnered with the shampoo company but you know what i would not be doing this live with you guys if i wouldn't have done that I would not, and I wouldn't have had amazing friendships that I have now all over the world because of it. And I was so scared to do it because I was so scared what other people would think because I was like, they're gonna think that I can't do real estate if I'm doing money. And reality is I have done more real estate this year than I have done previously, and I'm doing money as well because people work with people they like and if they like you and they trust you 
and they know that you're just about having a bigger, more beautiful life, multiple streams of income, then who cares what the naysayers think? The first time that I did a video and I talked about what I was doing, I had sweat on my upper lip. I was so freaking nervous because I was so worried what people would think. I had 13,000 people end up watching that video and I was like, oh my goodness. And you know what? Two people had negative things to say. Two people. And those two people that said something negative, they're not even anyone I care about. They don't belong in my world. They don't align in my world. And I really think that when you get crystal clear on who you want to be and how you can use your gifts, your unique gifts, you guys, that's when the good stuff happens. That's when the beauty comes into your world. And that's when you truly, truly, truly can lead your life by design. Okay, my beautiful friends, that is all. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. If you guys um, have any questions or I would love to know like what resonated for you in what I talked about, leave it in the comments because I will respond to every single one of you. If you leave it in the comments, I will respond to you. Um, if you want a copy of the 15, 13 pages of notes that I took at this amazing event, um, go ahead and just put it in my Facebook page where you guys can actually see um, all the stuff that we talked about. And it's a picture of shoes and then like speakers and you guys can um, put your email there and then I'll make sure to get you guys the notes from the conference. But just be true to you. You guys, one of the last lines that I heard that was so incredible was um, recognize the beauty in your sisters and your brothers without questioning your own. You can honor someone, you can love someone, you can pay tribute to them, you can lift them up and think they're doing incredible without saying, my gosh, they're doing such good things. Why am I not doing enough? That's the biggest takeaway for me. Be true to you because you are worth it. You are worthy and you deserve everything that you want in this life. Have a good day, guys.